Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, um, I'd like to address my remarks to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, my Democratic colleagues. Yesterday, I spent almost the whole day working with Democratic colleagues on a variety of proposals to try to get bipartisan results here in the Senate. We've got more of those this year than most people think, whether it's the progress we've made on No Child Left Behind, or on the trade bill, or on the doc fix, or on changing the way we pay doctors, or on the USA Freedom Act, on defense authorization, terrorism, it's a long list. And I was working on that yesterday because that's what I'm supposed to do as a United States Senator. I'm not sent here to posture or to make a political point. I'm sent here, given this privilege, in order to create an environment where we can solve problems for the benefit of the taxpayers, for the benefit of the American people. So that's how I spent my time yesterday. I don't think any other Republican spent more time than I did working with colleagues on the Democratic side to do that, which is why I'm addressing my remarks to my Democratic friends. What they propose to do is block our moving to the appropriations bill for the defense of this country for the third time, for the third time. And there is no justification whatever to do that. And what I'm saying to my friends is don't go there because if you continue to block appropriations bills, you're going to set in motion an irreversible trend toward partisanship in the Senate, and I'm going to lead it. I'm going to lead it. Instead of spending my time on behalf of working with Democrats to get bipartisan results, we're going to go in another direction. Now, why would I say that? Because I'm not here to be a partisan. Because here is, let me give you the example of this appropriations bill that Senator Feinstein, the senator from California, and I have worked on. We worked on that in a bipartisan way. I think even she would say she wrote about as much of it as I did. There are a page full of things that she thought are important for our country that are part of the bill. There are probably more than 75 senators wrote us letters about half of them Democratic senators saying, these are important provisions in the energy and water bill. Those provisions are in our bill. They're in our bill. They're ready to be considered. Twice, the Democrats have kept us from considering the defense appropriations bills. Today, they're gonna to do it again. And what they're saying to us is that we're gonna come up with any reason, any excuse, not to have a normal appropriations process. The last time was, well, we didn't have enough money. Well, the way you deal with not enough money, if that's your opinion, is you bring a bill to the floor, you vote on it, you pass it if you can, you send it to the president. If the president disagrees with you, he vetoes it, it comes back and we negotiate and we have a compromise. That's the way it works. You don't just jam something through because you have the power to stop something or jam it through. That's the way you do Obamacare. That's the way you make sure the country has no respect for what we're trying to do. But that's what they did, and so they got a result. And it's a result I'm not unhappy with. I voted for it. I voted for it. But what it does is create additional spending for defense of more than of $339 million, more than the president asked for in our bill, the energy and water bill, and additional spending for non-defense discretionary funding of more than $1.3 billion higher than the president asked for. I'm glad to see that because that money goes for ports, locks, and dams. That money goes for the Office of Science so we can have, have, have revolutions in manufacturing that create jobs. Money that can help with our biomedical research that we need to do. Uh, there are important things we need to do, and this bill will help us do them. But why would we not begin to debate that? Why would we not let the other senators do it? All we're proposing to do is to begin to do some of what in December we should have done in June and July. Now, the majority leader knows that he can't put every one of the 12 appropriations bills on the floor. There's not enough time. Not enough time this year. 
Why is there not enough time? Because the Democrats blocked it in June. They kept us from going to the bills, even though this is the first time in six years that all 12 appropriations bills have come to the floor. Why is that important? That's what we do here. Our job is to review the purse, to decide what to spend, more for this lock, less for that project, keep the budget in balance if we can, that's our job. And they blocked it twice. And they're getting ready to block it again with a vote today. I'm saying don't go there because you're gonna set in motion an irre irreversible course in this Senate and I'm gonna lead it. I'm gonna use whatever skills and powers I have to do that. All these democratic provisions don't have to be in the energy and water appropriations bill. They don't have to be in any of the bills because we have the majority and you don't. So we're gonna play that kind of game. We can play it too. We can play it too. I'm not one who usually does, but I'm able to play. I'm able to play or I wouldn't have gotten here. So I wanna to say to my friends on the other side, don't go there. Vote to put the bill on the floor. Vote to give ourselves a chance to have amendments. Why would the other 70 senators not want to have a chance to have a say about the appropriations bill? 30 of us are on the appropriations committee. We did our work. We approved the bill, in our case, 26 to 4. 26 to 4. It's a bipartisan bill. Why would we not put bills like that on the floor and let the other 70 senators have their say? What are they here for if they don't want to have their say about appropriations? They might as well be home watching television. They should be here deciding the issues that face our country. So I hope my friends on both sides of the aisle can tell I'm not happy this morning with the direction things are taking. I don't like the fact that I spend all day working with Democratic colleagues to get bipartisan results, and they come along with a tactic for the third time that says, if we don't get everything we want, we're gonna not have an appropriations process. Well, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. And it will go not in a way that's good for the country, not in a way that's good for the Senate, but it will give the people who have a majority in the Senate a chance to assert themselves and write the bills. At least we can do that. There's no reason really why we need to have 75 senators' ideas about priorities in the energy and water appropriation bill if the majority doesn't want to. There's no reason to have the ranking members' opinions in any of these appropriations bills if the majority doesn't want to. Now, the way we have worked in our committee, and I've worked with a senator from California for several years who's just a terrific person and a wonderful senator, is we've worked together. So why should we stop that process when the bills come to the floor? So I respectfully, through the chair, ask my colleagues to think again. Don't do this. Don't send us a signal that we're never again gonna have another normal appropriations process for the United States Senate. The American people don't want that. We don't want it. And I am sure, I can assure you that my friends on the other side don't want it. So my hope comes. My hope is that one way or another, the majority leader and the Democratic leader have a conversation and that the Senate come to its rational senses and begin a normal appropriations process with as much time as we have between now and the end of our time here in December, which would be a signal to all of us that we're gonna work in a bipartisan way on a normal appropriations process for the good of the country. And that we're not just gonna to try to think up any excuse we can think of not to move an appropriations bill to the floor. Two years ago, the majority leader simply wouldn't bring the bills to the floor. This time, the minority leaders blocked the bills coming to the floor. Let's get back to work, for heaven's sake. That's what we're here for. I'm ready to go to work. I much prefer the way I worked yesterday, working with my colleagues, but I'm prepared to work in another way if that's what we need to do to get some balance in the United States Senate. I thank the President, I yield the floor. Mr.